scientists at the Kenya Medical Research Institute, Kemri, have embarked on a study to establish the effectiveness of the Moderna vaccine among adults aged over 40. The researchers will also study the vaccine's effectiveness amongst pregnant women and adults with HIV. The study, which starts in August, will target 250 participants and end in December next year. And as Dorcas Wangira reports, this development comes at a time when Africa is making more progress towards manufacturing the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine in South Africa to be distributed by the African Union. Efforts to further research and develop vaccines locally continue with Camry, set to commence within the month of August, a groundbreaking research on the Moderna vaccine that could help inform its entry into Kenya's government vaccination program. The study will target 250 participants for 12 months, adults aged above 40 with underlying conditions, pregnant women aged above 18, adults aged above 18 living with HIV. The objective the objectives of the study are to assess vaccine efficacy to prevent symptomatic COVID-19 starting 14 days after the second dose in adults at risk of severe COVID-19, to assess vaccine efficacy to prevent severe COVID-19 starting two weeks after the second dose in adults at risk of severe COVID-19, and to assess the safety and tolerability of the vaccine in adults who are at risk of COVID-19. Of the 54 sites where the similar study is being held, two are in Kenya in Kisumu and the Mo University, 33 in South Africa, and others in Uganda, Malawi, and Zimbabwe. We've done a lot of groundwork. We have ethics approval. We're looking at a, an enrollment period of about three, four months, max, max five months. So you're talking about, uh, you know, five plus 12, about 17 months. Um, we should be done with the study once it starts. This, just but one of the earliest phases in Kenya's push to manufacture and distribute COVID-19 vaccines locally. You can have um, laboratory models right from cell cultures to animal models and then tested in the human model. That is the R&D, research and development phase of it. Then the second phase is now where now we attain the actual testing. Uh, where you go through phase one, phase two, and phase three, uh, what we call clinical uh, trials. Kenya is looking to adopt a fill and finish factory model. These timelines are happening within the next six months to one year. Or we have been in discussion with the companies that produce these vaccines so that they can waive their intellectual property. Pfizer and BioNTech have struck a deal for South Africa's BioVac Institute based in Cape Town to help manufacture around 100 million doses a year in 2022 of their COVID-19 vaccines for the African Union. The deal is to fill and finish the vaccine, the final stages of manufacturing where the product is processed and put into vials. It does not cover the complicated processes of mRNA drug substance production, which Pfizer and BioNTech will do at their own facilities in Europe. BioVac will receive a large batch of ingredients for the vaccine from Europe and will blend the components, put them in vials and package them for distribution. We'd like to act as quickly as possible. So already within this week, we are going to start putting orders on items that are known. We want to act as, as quickly as possible. Bearing in mind that the Pfizer vaccine is already being rolled out at the moment, like in South Africa. But the bottleneck is that Pfizer is handled under negative 70 degrees Celsius, which means that if BioVac manufactures the product, it has to go into negative 70 degrees freezers, for which there is a need to build facilities for BioVac's manufacturing site before the vaccines actually get transported. We just cannot continue to rely on vaccines that are made outside of Africa because they never come. They never arrive on time and people continue to die. In the last 24 hours, 801 more people have tested positive for COVID-19. From a sample size of 5,850, the test positivity rate is 13.7%. Nairobi continues to bear the highest burden, recording 319 cases, four times higher than the caseload in Mombasa of 77, Kilefi 71, Nakuru 60, Wasingishu 45, and Kiambu 36.
15 deaths have been recorded or late deaths having occurred in April, June and July, bringing the cumulative fatalities to 3,826. Dorcas Wangera, Citizen TV, Nairobi.